You dishonor the mark, you die. You kill the hold of the mark, you die. You run, you die. Winston Origins, the manager of the Continental Hotel and John Wick's invaluable friend explored. In the hostile and violent world of John Wick, loyal friends are an invaluable asset, and the iconic hitman is lucky to have a few of them. However, none of his friends have influenced and impacted his journey more than Winston, the manager of the Continental Hotel and a crucial cog in the high table machinery played by veteran actor Ian McShane. His constant support and advice has bolstered John's journey as he took down hordes of assassins sent out by the organization after he antagonized the high table. In this video, we will dive deep into the origins of Winston and his journey so far in the franchise. There will be a few spoilers from John Wick Chapter 4, so you have been warned. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Oh, he has to die. Who is Winston and why is he so important for the High Table? In the world of John Wick, the High Table is the organization that oversees everything from the underworld activities to the League of the Assassins. Their rules of conduct are quite rigid and breaking these rules means execution. Winston happens to be the enigmatic proprietor of the Continental Hotel in New York and his role is much more than just a hotel manager. Basically, the continental hotels around the world are used by the high table for various purposes, ranging from being the office that regulates assassin activities to providing sanctuary to the one seeking out business. A special gold coin is all it takes to seek the services of the continental, and it serves as the neutral ground for amicable settlements and deals. Besides these usual activities, Winston has also been seen keeping a documented record of all that unfolds, and he uses the services of his right-hand man Charon, who is his friend, come concierge to keep up with the duties. Previously, we have seen the character named Sophia, played by Halle Berry, keen on taking up the position of the Continental Manager, and that might indicate the sophistication associated with the job. However, Sophia's account also informs us about the sacrifices that are required to ascend to the position. Winston must have accomplished some impressive feats back in the day to warrant him the confidence of the high table for the role. He is keen on performing his duties and relishes the responsibilities and resources that are at his disposal. Winston doesn't necessarily tow the line blindly for the high table, but he's still a man of reason and does not make enemies unnecessarily. It is only when the push comes to a shove that we see him directly opposing the hierarchy of the high table. Jonathan, just walk away. Yeah, Jonathan. What did Winston do before becoming the manager? Winston relishes his job as the manager of the Continental, but not much is known about his life before he ascended to this position. John Wick 4, however, offers a crucial hint about his origins. There is a brief moment where the tattoo on his wrist is visible, and it indicates that he has been a member of the Ruska Roma crime family. It makes things quite believable, because people don't randomly appear out of thin air and go on to head the Continental. It can be assumed that he was a crime lord, who experienced his fair share of violence and killing before he was deemed fit for the role. There is a theory that suggests that John Wick was a part of the Marines before he took up the life of an assassin. The tattoo on his back makes many firmly believe this theory even though it is not specified in the movie, and the comic book origins of the character offer a different story altogether. However, if you do believe this account, then Winston might have also been in the forces before embracing a life under the high table. His mannerisms surely remind you of the army, and his strategic moves are quite believable for a retired general. He might have been the superior officer of John Wick in the forces, and had grown affectionate towards the lethal hitman over the years. We hope to know more about the character from the upcoming TV series Continental, which is reportedly going to dive deep into his origins. You might need this. Down the road. Is being the manager of the Continental as close to retirement as one can get? If you have observed the events of the John Wick movies, you are probably aware that once someone is enlisted in the services of the high table, there is no easy way of getting out. John Wick managed to do the impossible after completing an assignment that wouldn't have been possible for any other assassin, and we can assume that the blind assassin Kane in John Wick 4 retired the same way. So how are the others supposed to retire from a life of active violence and slaughter and crime? The answer might be hidden in the duties of of the Continental Hotel Manager. Once someone is in charge of the position like Winston, they don't necessarily have to indulge in violence themselves. It mostly comes down to maintaining the order and commanding loyalty from those who serve under them. 
Since you are refusing to step down, and you are refusing a direct order, your lives are now forfeit. Winston's relevance in the entire John Wick timeline explored. Winston has been a constant presence in the John Wick franchise, and the character was introduced in the first John Wick movie in 2014. A retired John Wick returns to the assassin business after the son of a Russian mob kills his puppy and steals his car. The mob boss puts a $2 million bounty on John Wick in order to save his son, and after his house comes under attack, he heads to the Continental Hotel for a safe residence. He is immediately welcomed upon arrival by Sharon, and he soon gets to meet his old friend Winston, who works as the manager. He warns about the consequences of getting back into the dark underworld, but he also knows that John is not the one to give up on his revenge. He informs John about the secret hideout of the mob boss's son, and later, when John is seriously injured by one of the crime lord's henchmen, he quickly retreats into the Continental. The first movie does a great job of establishing the role of Winston in providing a safe haven for John on the hotel premises. A hit woman named Miss Perkins attacks John inside his hotel room, and John subdues the attacker and lets one of his friends hold her hostage. However, she manages to kill the man and runs free, which violates the fundamental rule of spilling no blood on the Continental. Continental grounds. Winston makes sure that she pays the price for daring to break the code and Perkins is later executed at his behest. Winston continues to offer invaluable support to John as he searches for the mob boss and informs John about his location. You have no idea what's coming to you. I have everyone in New York. John Wick Chapter 2 Winston the Savior to give you a quick recap, an infamous crime boss, Santino D'Antonio, forcibly enlists the services of John Wick under powers of a blood oath that the assassin had previously taken. After John refuses, his house is blown to bits by Santino, and he has to head out to the Continental Hotel yet again, along with his pit bull. Winston explains the importance of fulfilling a blood oath as per the high table rules, and John reluctantly heads out to kill the sister of Santino D'Antonio so that he can ascend the council of the high table instead of her. However, Santino quickly turns back on his deal after the task is completed and employs his own assassins to have John killed. Meanwhile, Santino's sister's loyal bodyguard is also after his life and there can only be one person to pull John out of his conundrum. While John is engaged in a fierce fight with her vengeful bodyguard Cassian, they end up in the Continental premises, where violence is strictly forbidden. As Santino continues to plot against John Wick, Winston warns him about the consequences. Finally, when John catches up with Santino after killing a bunch of his assassins, he takes shelter in the Continental Hotel for his safety, but John disregards the fundamental rule and shoots him dead. Despite his violation, Winston does not execute John as per protocol, and this is the first sign of how greatly the manager cares for the seasoned assassin. Winston is forced by duty to enact John's excommunicado, but he does so after an hour's delay to buy him some time to escape. With this act, begins his journey of defying the high table and spiraling down a dangerous journey along with his old friend, John Wick. Let's make a withdrawal. High Table counters Winston's defiance in John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. His unfair help to save John Wick's life instead of executing him did not go unnoticed by the High Table. They sent an adjudicator to make him answer for his crimes, and the adjudicator lays down a strong verdict. Winston has to resign within seven days from his duties as the manager or face severe punishment, which is presumably death. Meanwhile, John Wick meets the Elder, who is the leader of the High Table, and the mysterious man offers him respite if he kills Winston. Winston for his defiance. However, after coming back to the New York Continental, John refuses to kill his old friend. Meanwhile, Winston refuses to abdicate his charges, and the adjudicator sends in her specialized assassin, Zero, along with a bunch of high-table mercenaries to eliminate both John and Winston. Thus begins one of the most epic fight scenes in the franchise, where Sharon and John put up a valiant defense against the attackers as Winston relaxes in a specialized room. After a heavy defeat, the adjudicator agrees to parlay with the manager, but in a sudden turn of events, Winston does the unthinkable in order to reassume his position as the manager once again. Did he really betray John Wick? Let us find out. Years. Now, I humbly acknowledge I overstepped and re my fealty to the high table. 
Did Winston shoot John Wick to save his life, or was it just a plan to save himself? John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum had a shocking twist when Winston pulls his gun all of a sudden and shoots John Wick multiple times in front of the adjudicator. The seasoned hitman is visibly shocked by the betrayal, and the impact throws him off the terrace. John is severely injured but nurtured back to health by the Bowery King and his men. It was a climax to remember and the fans started to question the loyalty of Winston, however the debate can easily be put to rest by sheer logic. For starters, Winston could have easily shot him in the head if he really intended to kill John. He purposely shoots multiple times in his near bulletproof suit and although it injures him badly, it was never going to be fatal. During an interview before the release of John Wick Chapter 4, the director Chad Stahilski stressed on this point making it clear that there was no betrayal at all. However, it does appear as though John was probably not kept in the loop about the plan or maybe it was just that the actor was pretending to be shocked out of his wits. Winston was helpless and this was the only way to prove his loyalty to the high table. The deception only worked briefly but it did buy John Wick valuable time to get away from the assassins and mercenaries of the high table. Besides, it has been established throughout the franchise that Winston takes his job as the manager of the Continental Hotel very seriously. He loves his responsibilities and takes pride in the manner in which he runs his business. The brief truce with the high table's adjudicator would have been rather short-lived if Winston did not prove his loyalty and there was no better way to do so than shoot the sworn enemy of the organization. Who is this? The Marquis de Gramont. Challenge him to single combat. Winston's impactful role in John Wick Chapter 4. The manager of the Continental was ever present throughout the narrative of the new release. It starts off as Winston is penalized for his support to John Wick previously because by now they have discovered his role in the fake shooting of the assassin. Marquis Vincent de Gramont is a high ranking member of the high table and he strips Winston of his duties as the manager and declares him excommunicado. He also shoots Winston's long standing concierge Sharon dead as a punishment and and Winston has to watch helplessly as he destroys the New York Continental Building. By now, you know for sure that the experienced manager is not going to take such punishment lying down. After John Wick comes back to New York after his failed visit to Osaka Continental in Tokyo, he meets Winston at Sharon's gravesite. The man is calm even in his tragedy and his thinking cap is on as always. He advises John to challenge Vincent de Gramont to a direct duel as per the old ways of the high table. If the assassin manages to win the duel, he will be guaranteed freedom from the wrath of the organization and his life would finally be at peace. As John heads out to enlist himself as a member of the Ruska Roma crime family to throw a legitimate challenge, Winston and Bowery King continue to conspire against the high table. While the terms of the duel are being discussed, Winston enlists himself as John's second, which effectively means that John's loss would mean his execution. He also manipulates the contract of the duel and includes the clause where John Wick's victory will reinstate him as the manager of the Continental after rebuilding the facility. He also risks his life by accompanying the Bowery King to deliver the special bulletproof suit to John to help his chances against the hordes of assassins sent out by Vincent to prevent him from reaching the dueling site. Later, when John wins the duel after killing Vincent, Winston painfully watches him succumb to his wounds. He also accompanies the Bowery King to visit the gravesite where we see him bidding farewell to John Wick who rests beside his late wife. If you think about it, Winston is once again the crucial character in the narrative and without his words of advice to challenge Vincent de Gramont to a duel, John would still be engaged in constant battles with the hundreds of assassins and mercenaries sent out by the high table. The movie also explores the true dimensions of his relationship with John Wick, which brings us to our next segment. You dip so much as a pinky back into this pond. May well find some is Winston John Wick's father? It may sound a bit far-fetched, but there have been a few fan theories that have explored the possibilities. People have often wondered what makes Winston so biased towards John Wick that he even goes out of his way and risks his life to help the hitman. It seems like we finally have some answers after the recent release in John Wick Chapter 4. The last scene takes you to the funeral of John Wick, who has seemingly died from his wounds in the duel. Winston and the Bowery King stand beside his tombstone, which is placed right next to his late wife life just like he wanted to. As the Bowery King walks away, Winston bids a final goodbye to his old friend muttering the words, farewell my son. While he delivers these final words, the camera also captures a tattoo on his wrist that indicates his association with Ruska Roma, the same crime family that trained John Wick to become a lethal assassin. This is a subtle detail that fuels the speculations that Winston could actually be his father, but we beg to differ. My son 
Blood is a term of endearment that is used frequently, even if the person is not associated by blood, but it does indicate some form of fatherly affection. What seems more likely is that Winston has seen John grow up over the years. It is also quite possible that he was a close friend of John's father, and thus he has known John Wick since his formative years. There have been a few indications that Winston is quite familiar with just how dangerous John can be, and even though Winston is now an old man, he displays a few glimpses of shooting skills and strategizing that are similar to John Wick's style. He may have trained young John and in the process developed a lifelong association with the dreaded assassin. We cannot rule out paternity, but surely John was never aware of such a thing even if this was to be true. But surely he is a fatherly figure for John and that would explain why a man of logic relentlessly backs John Wick with all his resources even when he breaks the basic foundation of the high table rules. Hello, Winston. What makes Winston so special and such an invaluable asset for John Wick? Don't be fooled by the seemingly innocent appearance and old age because Winston is far more resourceful and powerful than he appears. He commands a lot of respect in the underworld, which can be observed from the way powerful personalities such as the Bowery King treat him. Winston has incredible networking skills and an old 6230 Nokia phone is all he needs to send out his message for the assassins under his command. He has the wealth of experience and the fact that he survived in this brutal world for all these years is a testimony to his influence and power. He cannot be intimidated even if it is a member of the high table council ordering him, as we can see from the way he talks back to D'Antonio when the latter demands a revocation of John Wick's membership. Winston is a proud man and he doesn't take too kindly to some Someone questioning his authority, and when the need arises, he is not scared to show his dissent against the all-powerful organization. When the adjudicator orders him to step down from his post, he calmly states that the high table can take back the Continental Hotel from his control, but they can never keep it for too long. This implies the kind of loyalty that Winston commands, which gives him all this confidence. Of course, he has every reason to be confident with a seasoned killer like John Wick by his side. Winston has also proved his skills as an expert manipulator. His mind keeps him ahead in a game where the slightest slip-up can result in death. He convinces John to turn against the high table when it was the need of the hour and during the terms of the duel, he conveniently ensured that John Wick's win should reinstate him as the manager of the Continental Hotel. H might have caught up with Winston, but he still remains an expert marksman, which is evident from his shots aimed at John Wick that were purposefully aimed to hit his bulletproof suit. He uses the iconic cold model 1903 pocket hammerless and a dot .32 ACP pistol with pearl grips. It can be said with confidence that the man was as lethal as John Wick in his prime. Do let us know in the comments below where you think this character will be headed next. Can he actually bring down the high table after being reinstated, or will he choose to serve loyally? Two rules that cannot be broken, Jonathan. No blood on continental grounds and every marker must be on.